the Sublime Show. We begin by taking a trip to a beautiful and mysterious world. A dark and primeval force from the very dawn of time is threatening to destroy this peaceful land, and only two unlikely heroes can save the day. This is Jack and Daxter, a forthcoming title that claims to finally do justice to the PlayStation 2's hardware. And with the game only 60% complete, it's hard not to believe the hype. The graphics look gorgeous with fantastic animation and rich, lush surroundings to complement the action. The design team behind the game are Naughty Dog, who are perhaps most famous for their seemingly endless Crash Bandicoot titles. Unlike this fellow, we're overjoyed to see a PS2-enhanced Crash game being ditched in favour of this brand new venture. And if the team can bring their trademark irreverence and humour to their latest creations, we should be in for a real treat. The quality of the environments is second to none. The adventure takes place along a massive stretch of continuous coastline full of stunning effects. Just look at the heat coming off that torch. The gameplay will be an interesting mix of genres. Although predominantly an action adventure, the various characters you meet along the way will involve you in subquests, which include driving and strategy sections. Combine this with immersive music and effects, and it looks as if the PlayStation 2 is finally going to get the software it deserves. This is definitely one to watch. Nothing else gives us a warm glow quite like helping fellow gamers, so we're going to increase the heat for all you Dreamcast owners. Yes, it's tactics time again, and if you've been chilling out with Snowcross Championship Racing, you'll be surprised to hear that there's a secret racing mode. If you want to know more, grab a pen. At the options screen, hold the right trigger and push right, right, left, left, right, right, and then release the trigger. Now start a new race and you'll discover that your high-powered snowmobile has been transformed into a go-kart. The perfect vehicle for some slippery fun. Now you can whiz around the tracks at high speed with your body just inches from the ground. This cheat won't help you win any races or beat the game, but you have to admit that driving four-wheel vehicles on an icy surface can be lots of fun. Be careful though, because it's really slippery out there. Here are my friends. My name is Pom Pom. I'm always ready to take you on an adventure. My name is Chippin, and I'm here to help you when you need me. Now the introductions are over with, let's get down to business and join this garish threesome as they embark on an out-of-town escapade in Adibuchu countryside adventure on the PC. This preschool title provides children with 21 learning activities. Each one helps them identify colours, shapes, size and sound associations whilst learning about flora and fauna along the way. The graphics are good if not spectacular, but the use of vivid colours and simple animation is spot on. The interactive story is aimed to teach visual, memory, sequencing, keyboard and mouse skills and there are three difficulty levels to tackle along the way. This bright package certainly serves its purpose well and should keep inquisitive kindergarten gamers happily occupied. Oh dear, the swing is full of surprises, hee hee! Another one of life's valuable lessons. are about to land on your PlayStation now as we take a look at Roswell Conspiracies, Aliens, Myths and Legends, a brand new 3D action adventure. In the game, you play Nick Logan, a member of an undercover agency called the Global Alliance, which is dedicated to tracking down hostile alien invaders across the globe. Now it's up to you to scour the game's 15 stages and track down any off-world oddballs, solving puzzles and defeating bosses along the way. The game features some cleverly interspersed first-person action scenes like this airborne assault on a freight ship and some vaguely unnerving underground tunnels where you have to rely on night vision. The levels are simple in design but all very different, ranging from city streets to beaches and lighthouses. 
The game also takes a lot of inspiration from the film world. Late in the quest, you'll get the chance to take on the alien queen in an assault suit straight out of the movie Aliens. While the controls in Roswell Conspiracies are a little cumbersome, this is still a varied and competent title with plenty to offer. We head off into the far reaches of space next to tackle those alien meanies on their own turf with Conquest Frontier Wars, the latest RTS to appear on the PC. At your command are fleets of spacecraft over a range of different galaxy maps and movement between each sector involves passing between wormholes. Initially, this is quite exciting as you don't know what awaits you on the other side. Usually, you'll find a squadron of enemies, which means that you'll have to engage in combat almost immediately. One useful feature is the game's allocation of fleet admirals. With so many units to control, you have the choice to equip certain squads with an AI commander who gives orders on your behalf. You can then task the admirals with defending territories or setting up diversionary attacks while you handle the main assault. In your mission to conquer the galaxy, you can choose to lead any of the three different races on offer, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. The main drawback, though, is the 2D gameplay, which only allows you to move across space rather than through it. That said, Conquest Frontier Wars is a complex and involving strategy title that offers a huge playing area and plenty of scope to keep the legions of RTS fans rooted to their PCs. Our game of the week this time is the very last racing title to appear on the N64 before it gives way to its successor, the GameCube. So get in gear for the ride of your life in Excite Bike 64. Like Nintendo's classic water racer, Wave Race 64, this motorbike simulation is all about controls. Almost every button on the N64 pad has been used to give players 100% mastery over their virtual riders, making Excite Bike 64 one of the most intuitive, realistic and rewarding racing games on any console. The main challenge in Excite Bike 64 is the season mode, where players get to fight their way through 20 increasingly tough tracks. The courses are split between indoor arenas packed with insane jumps and outdoor trails which are littered with hidden shortcuts to help you sneak ahead of the pack. But our favourite feature is the track editor, which allows players to create their own courses using stretches of road from a simple menu. The track editor is fun and easy to use, and it'll keep you coming back to the game again and again as you create all manner of dangerous courses. Although Excite Bike 64 looks dated in comparison to other console racers, no other biking game manages to give players such fine control over their riders. Add to that the stunning character models which react to every bump and ridge on the track, and you've got a classic racer which no N64 devotee should be without. glance, Microsoft Train Simulator on the PC may not be everyone's cup of tea. In fact, trains don't exactly have a reputation for being the hippest form of transportation. But now Microsoft is trying to widen the appeal of rolling stock, combining it with the joy of playing games. This sim is not to be sneezed at. After all, not every game has its own fan website where you can swap tips on locomotive and track design and discuss the ins and outs of engine and livery skinning. seems too much like hard work, you can just kick back and relax. It's actually graphically gorgeous to look at, so there's a passenger camera where you can just sit in the carriage, and look out the window and watch the scenery go by, and that's a really cool thing to do, it looks really good. But there's a, there's a big base of people who just want to get involved in railways, and computer games are going to be one of the ways they can do it going forward. Combining a huge number of camera angles with realistic sound effects, you can almost feel the earth shake in Microsoft Train Simulator as tons of steel rumble by. All in all, this simulation gives players a unique opportunity to take a closer look at the engineering systems of these mean machines, as well as giving a realistic feeling of what it's like to drive a train down twisting tracks. great games arriving on the PlayStation 2, devoted PS1 players may be feeling a little left out. But never fear, because Hot Wheels Extreme Racing is speeding your way. In 
this madcap racing game, players control miniature toy vehicles as they drive on the land, zip across the water, and fly through the air. Players required to change their speed machines during each race to pass dangerous sections of the course, and driving through the floating rings will instantly transform your vehicle into a completely different toy racer. Hot Wheels Extreme Racing may not be the prettiest title around, but it's shaping up to be a fast-paced, hilarious game. PS2 titles such as Gran Turismo 3 may make original PlayStation games look rather dated, but Hot Wheels should prove that Sony's original console can still deliver in the gameplay department. Stay tuned for a full review of this promising title in a future show. OK, time for our competition now, so grab a pen. This week's prize is a PS1 and a copy of Rugrats Totally Angelica to play on it. So prepare to get up to some mischief with everyone's favourite spicy little girl in this excellent game. To win this prize, just call our number and answer this question. Which of these is a famous train? Is it A, the Orient Express, B, the Japanese Quick, or C, the Chinese Fast? If you think you know, call 09009 of the Alone in the Dark series will know how involving the games can be, with their moody mixture of suspense, action and downright scary moments. So with the fourth instalment, Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare, soon to be released on the PlayStation 2, can it still raise the hairs on the back of your neck? Once again, we're in the company of the paranormal investigator Edward Carnby. And after setting off to explore a remote island, it isn't long before he finds himself in a whole heap of trouble. To find out a little more about this spooky game, Simonet went to visit a very spooky man in a very spooky house. The game is sort of based in an actual um, old mansion. Uh, but leading to the mansion, there is a, there's quite an extensive outdoor area and um, there is actually a fort and a, a secret underground laboratory. So, you know, the, the destinations are quite varied and they, they all look absolutely stunning. This is the best looking Alone in the Dark yet and the shocks and frights are still there in abundance. Relying on plot and atmosphere to unnerve players rather than gore, the new nightmare has an emphasis on puzzle solving rather than all out action. The game has already appeared on several platforms, but what makes the PS2 version so special? I'd say the PlayStation 2 version is the version out of all the versions, um, primarily because we've managed to achieve all the goals that we, we originally set out, and uh, you know, we haven't had any limitations. And the developers have also made full use of the PS2's awesome power. In terms of differences, all the characters have got lip sync, so it's more of a movie-like experience, so to speak. If you like scary movies, you'll love this. Alone in the Dark is definitely for adults only, but it's still one of the most compulsive quests around. to hit the streets for some courtside action. If you think those NBA stars are too big for their boots, then this cheat should bring them down to size. At the loading screen, press square four times, circle four times, and then up. Let's do it. When the game begins, you'll discover that those basketball giants are now a little more pocket-sized. These miniature marbles can still play basketball, though, jumping several times their own height to get the ball in, making those slam dunks look even more spectacular. For something larger, enter square four times, triangle once, circle twice, X once, and up. This cheat will let you watch in amazement as the players run around the court with heads bigger than the basketball itself. Don't worry though, these large-faced legends may be slightly bigger on top, but it certainly doesn't affect their scoring abilities. Now it's time for a look at Cybernet's top 10 PC games. Counter-Strike Opposing Force and the original all-in-one package, Half-Life Generation, is at 10. At 9, it's the super statistics best that is Championship Manager 2000-2001. Real-time military action is at 8 with the explosive expansion pack, Sudden Strike Forever. 
At seven, battles from a different era with those excitable Cossacks and their seemingly endless European wars. More Half-Life adventures, this time with Barney, the unluckiest security guard in the world. Blue Shift is at six. Looking to add more spice to their lives at five, those warring factions clash in Emperor Battle for Doom. At four, wrestler lion, vanquish all mighty foes and let your followers live in peace. It's black and white. Those sims are living it up at three with their house party. Ride him, cowboy! It's the return of the role-playing master at two with Diablo II, Lords of Destruction. But commandeering the top spot is the ultra-realistic military sim Operation Flashpoint. Time for some covert manoeuvres now as we embark on Operation Winback for the PlayStation 2. This shadowy madman is Kenneth Coleman. Not a particularly fearsome name, is it? But now that he's got his hands on a satellite weapon, he's the world's greatest threat. Enter Jean-Luc, a young member of an undercover army squad sent in to ruin Kenneth's plans and bring him and his gang to justice. Having originally appeared on the N64, this conversion has received only the most minimal of makeovers, resulting in yet another PS2 title with disappointing visuals. However, the playability still remains. Most of the time you'll be pressed up against your surroundings, ready to leap out and attack your aggressors. It's a neat little manoeuvre, but being one of very few moves available to our hero, it soon wears thin, leaving you wishing you were controlling a character with a little more versatility. The two-player mode, however, is surprisingly good fun, proving yet again that computer-controlled opponents are a breeze compared to one of your friends. As a stopgap leading to the release of Metal Gear Solid 2, Operation Winback is an enjoyable PlayStation 2 diversion. But with Snake's latest adventure just around the corner, we'd rather wait a little longer. And can you blame us, Jean-Luc? I guess not. <laughs> doesn't have to be slow, dirty and stressful. Just check out these visions of the future, gleaming concept cars and interiors stacked with every gadget you could possibly imagine. Underneath these sleek and dynamic lines are TV screens, audio systems and computer games. Great fun perhaps, but how about something a little more practical? How about technology that could make driving safer and more convenient? This is where internet technology comes in, starting with a house where every function is connected to the web, from the blinds to the fridge. From the comfort of his armchair, this lazy, sorry, this technology user can check various aspects of his car. He can monitor fuel level, tyre pressure or program destination coordinates into the car's computer so that it can plan a journey. He can even download music remotely into the car's stereo system. Alternatively, he could put on his shoes and head outside himself, but who wants to do that when the future is sitting around in your armchair? Once out on the road, these smart cars will use technology to find uncongested routes, improve security, and even contact roadside assistance in the event of a breakdown. Yes, cars will still break down in the future. Unlike her lazy husband, this woman has actually managed to walk into the garage. Very impressive. In the near future, she won't even need to use her fingers because this car contains voice-activated technology. Go to FM radio. Okay. Hey. Now that's what we call entertainment. It may look like a classic 60s model, but these elegant lines possess much more than just aesthetic appeal. The car also features world news, internet radio, remote fault diagnosis, you name it, and it can all be activated by voice. But be warned, you still have to steer with your hands. Fumbling around with road maps and getting lost on strange motorways will also be a thing of the past. 
as this concept car contains state-of-the-art satellite navigation systems and voice control, so you can actually ask your car for directions as you drive. This futuristic vehicle also features web access and onboard entertainment, so you can watch movies, surf the internet, or play games on the go. There's even somewhere to put your drink. And it's not just the design and content of these cars that's conceptual. When the next generation finally arrives, you can be sure that they'll be robust, safe and reliable as robots test every component. This car is going through 150,000 miles of use in just a few weeks. So what use is all this fantastic driving technology without some nice bodywork to wrap around it? Well, many shiny new concept cars are currently in development around the world, and one day we'll all be able to take them for a spin. But until then, happy dreaming! Tony Hawk's skateboarding stunts are crazy, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hold tight for your first glimpse of Airblade, a futuristic PS2 hoverboard adventure which could be one of this year's hottest titles. Like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the game requires players to pull off outrageous stunts and link them together into high-scoring combos. However, the riders in this futuristic world all control Airblade boards, which hover inches above the ground, allowing them to perform tricks which today's skateboarders can only dream about. In the game, players are given a choice of three moves which can be used to unleash stunts. Grind maneuvers allow gamers to slide down rails and along the sides of walls, while trick moves can be used for handstands, somersaults and other acrobatics. But our favourite are the grabs, which your character can use to swing around poles and smash security cameras, or to reach higher platforms. Airblade is only 70% complete at the moment, but it's already causing quite a stir. While the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater sequel simply offer more of the same gameplay, Airblade is hoping to give PS2 players a completely original, extreme sports experience. But will it deliver on all its promises? Stay tuned to Cybernet and we'll bring you more details in a future show. That's all for this episode of Cybernet, but we'll be back with even more fantastic games and features from around the world. Don't forget you can always try our competition to win a console. Meanwhile, check out some fast and furious racing action from Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec. See you soon, just keep watching Cybernet.